I've spoken with a number of people this week who are starting in on their 0.2. They're working on fixing their first issues in open source projects. And some people are saying, well, you know what? I'm having a hard time finding things to work on. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to give you a few strategies that I think are useful for doing this. It is, it's, it's not hard to find things to work on on GitHub. So, you know, here's an index of 190 million repositories on GitHub. There are literally millions and millions of open issues. So the problem isn't that, you know, is there, is there, is there an issue that's right for me? <laughs> yeah, there, there's an issue that's right for all of you. You can all work on this stuff. The problem is getting you connected with something you want to do. So part, part of what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get you to the point where you can be given something to work on and you have the skills and the confidence and the experience to be able to go and fix it. So when you go to apply for the jobs, you're going to be given lots of times places like to give you these stupid uh, whiteboarding coding challenges or take home problems or, you know, here's here's a bug, fix this bug, or here's a problem, figure out why this isn't working. And we want to see how you do it. We want you to talk about how you did it. I'm giving you essentially the chance to practice doing something like that. I want you to go to a project that you haven't worked on before. I want you to get their code, read their code. I want you to figure out how it works and I want you to make a fix, send the pull request in, interact with them, iterate on it, fix it, get it accepted. So in your head, I want you to think about this as a chance to practice uh, being able to fix things, being able to code in projects that you don't know. So it's very different than writing your own project from scratch and you know how everything works. Okay, so the first thing that I think happens is people only go, they discount how much they're capable of. You can fix all kinds of things. Like you at this stage, if you sit down and spend some time at this, you can do a lot more than you think you can. So let me show you some ways, some strategies for trying to find things to work on. Like if I was gonna try and find something to work on today. Okay, strategy number one is to do a top-down approach. So I'm gonna start, let's say, with things that I think are interesting. So just as an example, I, uh, I use Twitter a lot and I often see projects listed on Twitter. And the other day I saw this project listed and it's just like such a cool project. Uh, it is a full browser inside of your terminal. And you know that I love the terminal. So here's a way to get a, uh, to get a browser that runs inside your terminal. And you know, you're able to like essentially be on the web, but, but have the, have the, um, the browser be inside your terminal. Anyway, I won't go through all this, this video. So here's this thing. It's, it, it's a very cool project. I wonder if I could contribute to it. So I begin by being interested in the project. And yeah, they have 141 issues and I go and look at the issues and I could start looking through this until I find a bug that I could work on. So that's one way to get started. And that is start from a project that you like. GitHub's actually added a really interesting feature. If you go to the explore tab, github.com slash explore, whoops, it will give you, let me go back here it will give you like a curated list of what it thinks you would be interested in. So there's lots of stuff in here. And I could, you know, like I could go and look at some of these, like for example, I've been working on the Fastify project and it's showing me there's other Fastify uh, projects that you could work on. And if any of these have bugs that are like good first issues, they will come up right away. So here's a good first issue in this project or here's a good first issue inside a new project that I didn't know about. Fastify has this thing called under pressure. And if I click here, I can go and I can see uh, that they've got a good first issue filed six days ago in the project. And it's in, a, you know, it's in an organization that I've been working on. That might be perfect for me. So if you don't know what to work on, you know, you could start that way. You could use the explore tab and you could look at um, different, I don't know, different projects that might be cool and something that you could uh, you could contribute to. 
Okay, so what's another way you could do this? Another thing you could do is you could pick uh, a technology that you like. So a lot of you come into the course and you say to me, uh, I really like Angular. Let's say you like Angular. So you can go to topics on GitHub and then you can search through all of these topics. Like for example, example here's Angular. So if I go to Angular, it comes back with 25,000 public repositories that are that have set uh, Angular as part of their topic. So you scroll down through these and they can be all sorts of things. Like for example, there's a good first issue that pops up on the main Angular repository. So if you wanted to go and contribute to Angular, you could do that. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see lots and lots of places where there's good first issues that come up on different, um, different repos. And you might be able to get involved. Now, some of these don't have good first issues that come up, but this is a way for you to start seeing, okay, I like Angular, which repositories could I work on? And you can start looking through these and you start seeing cool things like, okay, Sheets.js is like this cool, like this, you might say, wow, this is a neat, this is a neat project, what is it? And you go and you explore it and they have a website and it's a simplified spreadsheet component for Angular. And you're like, that's cool. I, uh, I would like to get involved in this project. And you go and you look and they have 300 issues and you look inside the issues. And if you um, look at the labels, you check and see, do they have any good first issues? And they do, they have a whole bunch of them here and you could get involved in some of these. Some of these already have pull requests on them, but most of them don't have pull requests. Some of them have a lot of comments, and so maybe they're not as good, but some of them don't have very many comments, like this one here, for example. So you maybe would get involved in working on something like that. There's all kinds of these things. Like if you're interested in cloud compu computing, you're interested in Bitcoin, so you go and you look at Bitcoin. I've had students work on Bitcoin and Ethereum in the past. You could work on an issue inside one of the Bitcoin uh, repositories, all kinds of things here. So think about, you know, are there topics that you're interested? You're interested in COVID-19. Right now, all over the world, there's all these apps to uh, do contact tracing. Canada has one. They're all over Europe. You could get involved in those. Or maybe you say, you know what? I really love C Sharp. I know a number of you do. I want to get involved in C Sharp projects. So you go in, you take a look at the C Sharp topic, comes back with 31,000 uh, matches. And wow, so like the Windows calculator, for example, has C Sharp code in it. So you could go and contribute to the Microsoft calculator, or you could contribute to .NET itself. Did you know that .NET is open source? And you could go and you could get involved with that. So there's all kinds of you know ways for you to begin from the top, begin from topics that you like and work your way down. Okay, so another one that came up this uh, in channel the other day was talking with some students about Docker. So you could say, well, I'm gonna, I'm really interested in working on Docker, and I'm gonna go and look at the look at the Docker topic and see if it's possible for me to um, get involved in projects that are doing things with Docker. Same thing, right? Okay, so another strategy that's available to you would be to pick an organization or a like a, a company that is doing something that you think is interesting. So an example that came up in the channel today, Kate was telling me that she wanted to work on Mattermost. And she was looking at the documents for uh, documentation for Mattermost. Mattermost is like um, an open source version of Slack. So it's it, it, you're using Slack, it's basically Slack, but it's an open source version of it. So if you go and look up Mattermost on GitHub, you land on the Mattermost organization. So github.com slash Mattermost, and they have 155 repositories. So you say, okay, I wanna get involved in this project, what could I do? So at the top here, they have these pinned repositories. The pinned repositories are useful because they tell you these are the repositories that this organization thinks are its main repositories, or the ones that are worth highlighting. They might have lots of other ones that they don't really keep up to date anymore. So then you go, you look in here and you say, okay, they do things in Go, in JavaScript, in Java, in HTML, and Objective-C. So another thing I want you to notice is when you go and work on a project, 
you'll be surprised that projects don't just use one language. Projects will, they'll write their backend systems in this, they'll write some of their libraries in another language, they'll write their testing code in another language, their documentation in another language. So there's lots of ways for you to get involved. And if you look at what's going on here, you know, you can see that, for example, they have a mobile app, they have a web app, they have a desktop app, they have backend servers. So you could, you could say, well, I'm really interested in, let's say I'm interested in their web app. I wanna see how the web app works. So you go in and you look at the web app and you say, okay, it's mostly written in JavaScript and TypeScript. And you're like, okay, I know those languages. Maybe I could help out. You go to the pull requests and you take a look. So this is interesting because they actually have a bunch of Hacktoberfest uh, bugs in here. They're obviously interested in getting people involved. Lots and lots of things that you could work on inside of this project. Or you say, I'm interested in seeing what they do with Java. So you click on Java. And now what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get all of the, of the repositories that they work on with Java. Now you see how most of these are flat lines, like this activity for the last year is pretty flat. So that may mean that they've switched off of Java and onto other things, I don't know. So like React Native Device Info, React Native YouTube, I'm not sure. So if you take a look, for example, at Go, what are they doing with Go? Well, they have a bunch of stuff here for um, different plugins for things. They have their server, they have their localization stuff, um, they have bots, they have plugins for various things, plugins for Google Calendar, plugin for Zoom, all those kinds of things. So there's lots of little small projects like this plugin for Zoom has 17 issues. And actually there's some interesting places that you could get involved here like they've got some good first issues and so on that people could, could actually contribute to. So when you're thinking about um, coming in from the top, you might start with a technology like Angular or something like Mattermost and then work your way down. Or the same thing with WordPress. Um, instead of doing Mattermost, if I did WordPress, WordPress has 57 repositories and they write their code in PHP, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, etc. And they have all these different things that you can work on. So like, for example, they have this new front end system. They have a back end system and a front end system. The new front end system is called Gutenberg and they have 2,500 issues. And you go looking in the issues and you know, look at the labels. Do they have any good first issues? They do. So they have some that nobody, like they have quite a few of them here that you could go through and you could have a look at. So again, doing something top down, or you could look at the WordPress topic on uh, GitHub and you see that there's lots of different projects where they have various repos, but then there's other people that also have these sorts of things like DigitalOcean has configuration repos for setting up WordPress or um, starter themes. Like you could get in, you could start working on a WordPress theme, for example. Lots of people do that like as a job, like they get really into that. Project Gutenberg, I was just telling you about, they have lots of things you could do here. Um, security scanner for working on WordPress written in Ruby. Like so, so many things you could do. And again, that's coming in from the top. Another thing you could do, like we could look at uh, VS Code. Five thousand repositories related to VS Code. So there's all sorts of things in here, like the editor. Um, but then there's tons of um, there's tons of of plugins for VS Code. So maybe you go and you get involved. Like here's a Vim uh, a Vim plugin for VS Code, and it has a good first issue up on it. So you go and you look at that. Or uh, like I don't know. There's going to be so many plugins. Pr plugins for view, tons of stuff here. The docs repo, on and on it goes. One for icons, like there's so many of them. So for you, you might get involved in working on a theme. So this is uh, the Night Owl VS Code theme. All of these things, like they're just little projects often. Like let's take a look at this. Here, here is the repo and this is what it looks like. It's for making this theme in Visual Studio Code. And there's 37 issues open. And they have various things that they need help with. 
And maybe you go and get involved. Get involved in part of the ecosystem of VS Code or the ecosystem of WordPress or get involved in what's going on with Mattermost or all of those kinds of things. So you're, you're coming in from the top, you're picking something to work on based on uh, a technology that you like, an organization or a company that you respect, uh, an ecosystem around a product that you really enjoy, whatever it is, you're, you're getting involved like that. Okay, so another way to approach this is to go bottom up. And so when you do this bottom up, you don't necessarily know what you want to work on. You know you want to work on, on an issue and you know you want to work on an issue in C++, but you don't really know what else you could do. Like, what could I do? I know C++, what do I do? So you can go to github.com slash search, which is where I am right now, and you can start searching for things. And at the beginning, you're like, well, I don't really know what I want to search for. So there are two things that I want to show you right now, and that is how to use their prefixes and how to do the advanced search. So the prefixes allow you to do searches where you specify things. Like, for example, if I wanted to see all of the um, Mattermost issues, I would say user Mattermost. And if I did a search, you'll see that what I get back are 113 repositories for Mattermost. And if I click on issues instead of repositories, then it gives me 44,000 issues. So these are all of the issues that are open there. And if I limit it, instead of having the closed issues and the open issues, what if I only do the open issues? So now I'm looking at all of the Mattermost issues. I'm looking at 2000 of them, all the open issues. And then I say, you know what? I'm only interested in things that relate to JavaScript. So then I click on JavaScript. Now it's, and there's a bug there where it loses my open. So now I'm looking at Mattermost issues, open JavaScript, and I have 409 of these that come up. So then it shows me all of these sorted by best match, but you can sort by other ways. So for example, one of the things you might want to do is you might want to look at what, what was recently updated. So you click on recently updated and now it changes the results. And oh, this is an interesting bug. This is a bug we should uh, fix in. I can't, GitHub's not open source, so I can't fix it, but here, I'm going to switch back to open. So, you know, looking at some of these and, and you start to scroll down this way and do it. So what I'm showing you here, you don't have to have a, uh, a user, a particular user that you know about. Let's go back to the beginning. But you can. So if you want to put in some of these, um, these things on the front, you can. Like who the, who the user is, etc. The other thing you can do if you, as you're learning to do this is go to the advanced search. So inside the advanced search, you have all of these things, like for example, from these owners. So I wanna look for things on Mattermost and uh, WordPress, for example. So you can see that it's typing it out here for me. This is the way it would do it. And uh, I'm only interested in, let's see. Um, I only want open issues. And I want issues with a label of good first issue. And uh, what else do I want? I want, let's, let's try that. So look at what it's done here. So user matter most, user WordPress, label good first issue, state open. Let's try that. And I get 319 back and it's a mix of WordPress and matter most and stuff like that but I could change this around. So instead of doing this for a user, maybe I'm gonna look for a term like Docker. So I'm gonna do a search for Docker, good first issue, state is open, and what comes back are all kinds of, you know, Dockerize this project, create a Docker file, Dockerize, Dockerize, Dockerize. So that's interesting. Um, but I can use this technique so I could say, show me only open issues and I'm interested, let's say in C++. Let me clear, let me clear uh, this up here. I want it, all I want is, I want open issues. And I want to look at only issues. So 35 million, 37 million. I want to limit it to just the open ones, that's fine. And I want to limit it to say C++. 
Okay, so now I have you know over 1 million of them. So now you say to yourself, okay, um, how do I how do I further limit this? So maybe you're gonna you're gonna have something that you're interested in here, like you want to do something with a string, like you want to do something with strings. So now you're looking at uh, open C++ issues that include the word string. And maybe you're interested in only looking at things that have been labeled good first issue. And so this takes it down to 4,000. Okay, so then you start looking through some of these and um, taking a look at, like here's one for example, replace percent %s string formatter for f string formatter right here. And you can see this is the kind of issue that you could work on for sure. Somebody's already picked this issue up, so that won't work for us, right? Because this issue has been assigned. So that'd be another thing that would be interesting for us to figure out is how do we do a search? Let me do this, GitHub. I wanna go back to the advanced search. Let's see if we can figure this out. So, Assigned to users, none. Uh, let's see here. Open, label, good first issue, assignee, none. I have to figure out GitHub search assignee, what it can be. Oh, maybe it's nobody. Let's try that. So if I go here and I say nobody, Hmm, couldn't find any issues matching. Good first issue, assign E. Let's try this again. Um, assigned to nobody. Hmm. You can search for issues that have no assignee. Searching by missing. Oh, so I want to say no assignee. Okay, let's try that. So I go back here and I would change this to no assignee. Okay, so now I've got open. Let's see, open, good first issue, no assignee, type equal issues, and let's limit it to C++ again, 276 of them. And so you could look through and you could find, okay, you know, is there something in here that would work for what I'm trying to do? Like here's one, for example, from Google that you could work on. Here's another one from Google. Um, and there's 28 pages of these that you could go through and have a look at. So some of these projects are going to be small and some of them are going to be larger. So another thing you could do in the advanced search, you could limit it and you say you could say, I want to limit it to projects that only have more than a certain number of stars. So I don't want like, you know, let's say let's say I want to have um, greater than 100 or greater than. A, yeah, let's try that greater than 100 stars that takes it down to 32. So now we're getting into more popular projects and there aren't that many of them. So, sorry, I gotta go back to issues, I'm on repositories. So I go to C++, I want open, open string, label good first issue, no assignee, and um, stars. Man, there's a lot of bugs in this. Uh, advanced search. I want to do stars. Maybe I can't do this on, maybe I can only do this for repositories. Yeah, so I guess it's not going to let me do it for issues. 
So here I would have to be careful in terms of um, if I'm switching between repositories or issues when I'm gonna do something like this. Anyway, the point is when you're going to search for stuff like this, like let's do another one, github.com slash search. Let me start again, search. Okay, so if we do an advanced search, so let's say I wanna look for um, issues. I wanna only find open issues. I only wanna find good first issue. I want to I want to find, uh, I'll do this one later. Let's just start with that. So good first issue, state is open. So now let's limit it. Let's say that I only want Java. So now I have Java, let's say uh, no assignee, and I want Java, 6,000 6, issues. And so you start going down and having a look through some of these and see, is there something in here that I would be able to work on? And the answer is yes, you absolutely uh, could fix lots of these things. So don't be intimidated to try some of this stuff. You don't have to look for something that you've that's gonna take you three seconds to fix. Uh, start on a bug, it might take you a couple days to fix, but you can do it slowly over the month. So maybe the first one you pick is really small, but then you pick up some other ones that are larger and go on for a little bit longer. Same thing for Python, same thing for Go, same thing for all of these things. Okay, one other thing that I wanted to mention to you, and that is this, um, in, the, in the videos, I've been working on this shoulders thing. Shoulders lets you see issues that are available in other repositories that are in the dependencies of a project. So the telescope project, for example, we use tons of dependencies. So I thought it'd be interesting to look at all of the, look for good first issue inside of all of the dependencies of the telescope project. So it goes through and it finds like every one of these that goes by is a different issue that we could work on. And if I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna filter out, let me do it again and uh, grep for, I'll just have it change so it looks like this. So it's gonna scroll by issues in Facebook, Jest, all kinds of issues in Jest, lots of documentation stuff so you could work on testing things, lots of repositories that I've never heard of go by. So all kinds of dependencies that you don't realize, like it's saying that there's lots of dependencies in Jest. So like if we go and have a look, for example, at github.com, Facebook, Jest. Jest has a thousand, over a thousand open issues. Um, if we look at the labels, do we have any good first issue? Yeah, there's lots of them in here. Now quite a few of these, let's sort them by least commented. And you could see if any of these would be would be good, um, if anyone's assigned to them. Yeah, so like this one for okay. So here's a good example. Here's an issue: uh, removing a leading new line in front of runs. And down here, somebody asked to work on it, but they asked to work on it on January the third. Well, a lot has happened since January the 3rd and nothing has happened. So if you see something like this and you say, actually, I'd like to try working on this, you could come in here and leave a comment and say, if nobody else is working on this, I wouldn't mind giving it a try. And you can see what the, what the project will say. Back over here, there's all kinds of other repositories in here. React has a lot of, um, a lot of open issues. So Facebook and React. issues, label, good first issue. So you may find, yeah, they have some, but they're pretty taken up here, right? So they exist. What else is in here? Like Pinot, this is an interesting project. This is a logger project that I really like. They, um, this is a documentation issue and 
does anyone want to send a PR to work on this? So this is back in July and nobody's taken it up. So, it's, you know, there's lots of discussion in the bug, but nobody's actually gone ahead and fixed it. So there's lots of bugs that you could work on, lots of good first issue bugs that you could go and work on. You don't have to stick to the Hacktoberfest style uh, bugs. Like if I go looking for Hacktoberfest, Hacktoberfest is going to be a mess if I, let's just see if I'm right. Um, So 33,000 repositories. So we could do it based on repositories, but a lot of these repositories are just like, like this one, for example, a collection of words. So if you want to contribute to this project, they're like, please add a word. Well, sure, you could do one of these, but this isn't gonna, <laughs> this isn't gonna do anything for your resume. This isn't gonna do anything for your, the experience that you're working on. You're trying to learn how to fix code in real projects. So I would say that this is probably not where you should start. If you, you could look for issues. 49,000 of these are, you know, are Hacktoberfest issues. But again, a lot of them are, I don't know, I find that they're not very useful. So I would use some of these other techniques that I'm talking about when you're trying to look at it. The other thing that I would recommend that you do is um, that you take a look at the, um, the issues that other people work on. So when you're talking to your friends on Slack, ask them, hey, who's found a, a neat project? Like, what are you working on? And then go fix another bug in the same project. Talk to them about how they liked it and what, you know, what it was like for them when they were working on it. Anyway, I wanted to give you these strategies as a way to help guide you toward picking things, whether you do it top down or bottom up. But I want to get make sure that you're finding good things to work on and that you're not afraid to pick up something that seems a little bit intimidating because you'll be surprised at what you're able to do if you put in a bit of time.